Well, the goal of this exercise is to produce quantitative maps of soil organic carbon, SOC for short, from hyperspectral imagery and some ground reference samples. There are several potential methods to do that today. We'll be using partial least squares and random forest regressions. Therefore, open the applications from the main menu, select Regression, and then Regression Workflow. A pop-up window opens, and as you can see, some assistance is provided at the right-hand side of the panel. Now, let's first create a training dataset. Within the Regression Workflow pop-up window, click on the blue Application Wheel icon next to Training Dataset, and choose the first option. Create Regression Dataset from Continuous Valued Vector Layer and Feature Raster. Then, select the following settings. Choose the shapefile with the point data of all sampling locations and the soil properties as input for the Continuous Valued Vector Layer. Select the pre-processed High Specs image as input for Raster with Features. If you have the two datasets open in a map view, they will be selected automatically. Next. Open the Advanced Parameters drop-down menu and select SOC in the Fields with Targets field. In the Output dataset, I just select the Temporary File option. By clicking on Run, the process starts. For each sampling point in the shapefile, the value of the corresponding image pixel is now extracted, unless this pixel is masked, of course. Once the training dataset generation is complete, we automatically get back to the main regression workflow window. The pickle file we generated in the previous step should automatically be placed as training dataset. For the regressor, choose PLS Regression and adapt the number of latent variables in the code snippet below to 1. Below the code snippet box, select the original high specs image in the raster layer with features field and leave all other options as default. That way, all output will be saved as temporary files. You can save them later or define the memory options now. Just click 1 when you are ready. The partial least squared regression, PLSR for short, is one method that is good at handling data with a large number of predictor variables, the spectral bands, which are additionally highly collinear. These predictor variables, let's call them x, are used to predict the response variable that we call y and which is SOC in this case. Both X and Y are projected into a new data space in such a way that the covariance between them is maximized. In this new data space, only a few orthogonal regression coefficients, which are called latent variables, are used as predictors for Y, our SOC content. The number of latent variables needs to be evaluated to get the best result. Here, we advise you to set it to one because we already tested other options. After running the regression workflow, an HTML file will open in your browser, showing the results of your selected regressor. If the result is not displayed completely, please try with another browser. Anyway, before looking at the results in a little more detail, let's look at another regressor. For comparison, repeat the same steps using the random forest regressor. This time, Leave the parameters constant and press Run. Random Forest is another machine learning method that copes well with this large number of spectral bands that we have in imaging spectroscopy. Here, the outputs of multiple regression trees are averaged. Random Forest is good at handling small datasets and is robust to noise. Well then, let's look at the model metrics. You might actually find that yours slightly differ. That is normal every model run will generate slightly different results. The reason for this is that we use a cross-validation. In this case, it was a tenfold cross-validation, where the data was split into 10 subsets and the regression was run 10 times, leaving one subset out for validation each time. The other nine subsets were used to calibrate the regression model each time. Since the data is split randomly, the results vary slightly. The number of samples used for the regressor are displayed at the top. In our case, 35 samples could be linked to pixels, meaning that two sampling locations were masked. Then, we should look at some metrics in more detail. A prominent one is probably the coefficient of determination, or R squared. In my case, it ranges about 0.41 for the PLSR model 
and 0.45 for the random forest. That is not impressively high, but for this parameter, we are actually quite happy. Another parameter that I like to look at is the ratio of performance to deviation, the RPD value. As a rule of thumb, the higher the RPD, the better. RPDs greater than 1.4 means that the regression performances are medium. For regression performance improvements, one could consider, for example, larger soil reference data sets. Finally, I look at the root mean squared error, the RMSE. This parameter strongly depends on the value range of your reference data. If the values of your soil property are comparably high, the corresponding RMSE will be higher too. So you better not compare the RMSE to different data sets. Below the model metrics table, you can see a scatter plot of observed versus predicted values. You can see that the outcome of the two models looks pretty similar, with many samples in the low ranges and four samples with higher SOC content. This skewed distribution is very typical for the SOC content. Of these four, two were predicted well. The other two were either over or underestimated. As the overall number of samples, 35, is pretty low, these four samples exert a strong control of the model metrics. In addition to the HTML file, you can find some virtual files, such as the SOC map, added to the data source's window of the Nmap box. Just right-click on the Output Regression file, select Display in a new map, and choose Default Colors. Then, in the Data Views window, right-click on the Output Regression file and choose Layer Properties. In the window that pops up, you can select Symbology on the left, and then One Channel Pseudo Color at the drop-down menu at the top. Below, select a color range. I like the reds. If you look at the quantitative maps that you produced, high sock areas will appear in darker red colors compared to the low sock areas. If you are not happy with the display of your results, try to adapt the symbology, for example, by expanding the min-max value settings and selecting the standard deviation option. In my map, I recognize an area that I know to be a kettle hole. The structure itself was masked, as it is probably covered by vegetation or too moist. However, around this depression, the organic carbon content of the soil is quite high, which was detected pretty well. Thus, even though the model metrics were in the medium range, I am overall quite satisfied with my results, and will look at more soil data to consolidate the model metrics. That's it for today, folks. If you would like to keep your results, please make sure to export and save them to a separate file. I hope you enjoyed our little exercise, and I keep my fingers crossed for your future analyses.